Okay, it looks like we are approaching the time. It is 11.01 and uh, so we are going to get started here. I want to thank everybody for joining us this morning and hopefully we have some good property management um, folks who are going to want to also participate today. There is a mute button there as well that you can mute yourself um, while this call is going on so we don't hear any background noise that may um, come on. However, this is an interactive uh, call, should I say, a meeting. That's why we set it up as a meeting instead of a webinar so that um, you would be able to participate and talk about some of these items that we're going to discuss about what we've learned during this time of social distancing. I was counting up today and today is number 18 for myself that I have been uh, here at my home and either visiting uh, the grocery store or the pharmacy and that is it. Um, so it's kind of a different world that we're living in and I know that a lot of people um, have some anxieties over um, the situation of what they're dealing with right now, whether it's on property of all of the people calling you saying, um, I can't pay my rent, what am I going to do? Um, trying to get into the offices when the offices are closed. It's a very, very stressful time for all of you who are on site and um, I under, you know, I, I applaud you for what you all are having to go through, but hopefully this will, this session as well as some of the future sessions of things that we'll be talking about will help you to um, be able to get a handle on um, some of those emotions uh, that may be running rampant right now with you guys. Um, also, uh, we'll talk about some of the things that you'll be able to use and hopefully will help you when you're working from home as well. So I'm going to go in here and share. Thank you again for joining us for what we have learned from social media distancing. Again, uh, you have at the bottom of your screen a chat box that you will be able to take a look at. You also um, will be able to put comments in there and we'll go through some of those comments if you have any questions or if you want to um, add to that. If you will add to something that I'm saying, please unmute yourself and um, feel free to share with us at, at that appropriate time. So we're gonna get into this and just start with some of the things that um, I have found uh, for myself that are very important during this time and especially when we're working from home, what we need to be um, doing and to help us have a little bit less anxiety. And one of those things is having a daily routine and agenda there. It's just paramount. I know most of us probably wake up like this little bunny sometimes, which it says, uh, Bugs Bunny is like my morning routine includes 10 minutes of me sitting on my bed and thinking of how tired I am. But what you really should be doing is um, coming up with a daily routine or agenda. And it may look like this wonderful agenda that I got off of um, uh, Pinterest. It was from Pinterest. And I love this one because it gives like that list of the top five um, things that uh, you're wanting to accomplish or to uh, your to-do list. It has a daily routine and in that daily routine, you need to be including all of the things as far as like um, the times that you're going to get up and move, um, the times that you're going to take a break, the time that you're going to um, fix meals and eat. Because when you're working from home, a lot of times, or even in an office environment that things are nonstop, you are not taking those appropriate um, health wellness type breaks that you need to be taking. Uh, I actually am doing Rachel and Dave Hollis's um, next 90 day program, which you can go online to Hollis 
Co. That's H O L L I S C O dot com and um, participate in their program. But it talks about things like getting up every morning and um, being appreciative for five things, showing what you have gratitude for today and writing those down, drinking um, half your body weight in um, ounces of water. So you weigh 140 pounds, you're gonna want to drink 70 ounces of water. That's also very important for you because drinking that water is also gonna help flush out all of the impurities in your body. It helps at times like this when um, people are getting sick. Uh, water is um, so good for you and it'll also make you feel better as well. But make sure to schedule everything that you need to do. Make sure that the people who may be in your home, your children, um, others, they all understand that I'm at home, but I'm only going to be available during these times unless it's blood or a uh, flood or any of those other things that happen at the house. I, I saw something on Facebook the other day and it was a wonderful little sign that somebody had put on their door that actually gave the instructions of if you want to ask me this, the answer is no. If you want to ask me this, the answer is no. So I thought it was kind of funny how they had put up there what their agenda was for the day for their kids so that they would know not to disturb them during other times. Does anybody else have anything that they like to add to their agenda or their daily routine that might be helpful to the group? And then mute yourself if you want to throw something in there. No? Okay, we'll move forward then. Also, working from home can be full of distractions. I highly suggest you do not work with the, uh, the television on. Uh, soft music in the background is very helpful though. If you want to, um, you know, type up some Spotify or music channel on your TV that's just simply music, it's um, really helpful for you. It does help move your day along and also heightens um, your whole demeanor and attitude towards things. Things just seem to move better um, through life when you have music in the background. I love this because this is exactly what goes on when you're working from home and all of the distractions of the children, the dog, the cat on your computer screen that you're having to uh, shoe off and uh, everything else that's going on around. I thought it was a, a good depiction of what goes on. And then also, I totally realized that I needed to reduce my intake to keep me from stressing out about what all's going on in the world. Um, there's so much news that comes in from so many different directions, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, constant alerts on your phone. Um, there's so many channels that are uh, news and on one channel you'll see one thing, on another channel you'll see another, and sometimes it becomes overwhelming not to um, mention the mom alerts and the friend alerts that you get of um, them sending you a text about did you see this or did you see that and so I have understood for myself that I can give myself a certain amount of time in the morning or in the evening um, to view it but I do limit my time on Facebook now and on um, other news channels uh, at the first of this I was watching a lot of um, Fox and CNN and um, keeping up with the numbers of what was going on and seeing how this was all spreading. And I realized that I started to feel like I was taking on the weight of the world from all of that that was coming in. We don't need to do that. We need to know what we can do for ourselves of um, keeping our own environment safe and uh, doing that, that cleaning, that uh, washing of the hands, the not touching the face, keeping our environments clean and, you know, not worrying about all of uh, the other things that are going on. They're going to go on. They're going to continue to go on. And uh, so just limit that. And I think that you'll feel a lot better just from limiting 
that amount of uh, intake. Also, this is a time for me um, to scale up. I am concentrating my efforts on trying to learn something new. Um, I'm trying to read something new, definitely on a daily basis. I've, I've been attending webinars in any of the downtime instead of turning on the TV and getting sucked into a new Netflix series, which is um, very habit forming for me because I love all of those period pieces on there, as well as that Tiger King. Uh, yes, I did get swept into that a little bit, but um, I've been trying to, instead of, you know, take the time to watch webinars that are informative and teach me a new uh, skill or a new habit. So I encourage you to do that. You know, there's, there's nothing that you can't learn to do on YouTube. Also, if you're trying to fix something in your house, uh, you can definitely go on there and it tells you how to fix everything. So uh, type in what you're wanting to know and YouTube can teach it to you. Also, all of the web talk, the um, TED Talks, I have enjoyed so many of those. And a lot of the stuff that I talk about in the sessions that I'm having with you for these virtual lunches actually come from some of the TED Talks and the information that I've gotten from there, as well as webinars. And um, the local associations are also doing a ton of webinars right now. So go on there and sign up for one of those in any of your downtime and try to take this time that we're able to be a little bit more settled and not having to, uh, for those that don't have to commute back and forth to work, aren't um, having to take that commuting time. I also like to set aside in the mornings when I wake up and are part of that agenda that I was talking about is um, setting aside an hour for me to uh, be able to spend development time for myself, whether that's reading or webinars or a class that I've signed up for and then also um, prayer and meditation. And uh, meditation, I know a lot of people are like, woo, meditation, it's not hokey pokey. There's uh, some great uh, apps on the phone that you can go on like Headspace and it just helps you to calm yourself and um, be able to handle what's thrown at you during the day a lot better. Uh, also, I wanted to mention NAA, uh, they have a learning site called Visto. They have a ton of soft serve free classes on there. And for all of those soft skills, customer service and um, some of the other skills that are free on there. So it's an opportunity to do that. Does anybody else have uh, anything that they like to go to? Any certain websites or anything that may be on Facebook that pops up? that they like to go on, if you'll unmute yourself and let me know if there's something that you like to go on. Come on, don't be shy, somebody share with me. Michelle, I know a lot of the gyms that are closed are doing online classes and stuff for something new, um, especially since we can't go. But I have a yoga website that I do literally every day and it's just, Got wonderful classes and like you can pick how much time if you got five minutes or 15 minutes or like 45 minutes sarah beth yoga it's sarah with an h she's fantastic uh -huh. and does that cost or yeah there is a paid membership with some of the sections are paid classes but she's got a ton of free stuff oh you, i'm gonna have to check that out sarah beth yoga okay sarah with an h awesome anybody else want to share with us I've actually um, just started this week. <laughs> I've been really bad. Um, just get, I, we have a gym that we put in our house when we first built the house and um, I hadn't taken advantage of it, but now I really am taking advantage of it. And cause I just never would have time when I would get home from visiting all the properties, but now it's, it's uh, finding my routine every day. It has been a bit of a challenge yeah. and Still finding myself sitting here entering orders or answering calls or stuff when my husband gets home so I'm trying to make sure that you know during the day I get the house picked up and you know do different things on my lunch hour or you know try to section things off so this morning I got up at 4 30 this morning with him and I uh, had a scare 
<laughs> I started coughing. <laughs> oh no. I had a scare that, oh my God, I've got Corona. <laughs> and it wasn't. I, it's just all the allergies and I'm, I'm fine. I'm not sick. I don't have any of the symptoms, but I freaked myself out. And so anyways, I was like, nope, got to get up, work out, do my stuff and get on my, get myself on a regimen. So it's been a little challenging, but I'm getting there. I, I agree. I mean, you know, I, I think that everybody probably will run from you in the grocery store <laughs> and in the house. Your husband probably ran from you at the time that you, you called. But he getting that, he told me to get up, get up and walk around. <laughs> Hank's had, Hank's had quite a lot of fun with me as far as like, he's like, hey, you want to watch this on TV? And instead of me wanting to watch something, I'm like, oh no, I'm going to go to this webinar and I'm going to watch this. I'm going to, uh, you know, put some good into my life. But we've been doing a lot of those, um, you know, chores on it, especially on the weekend of cleaning out and simplifying our life a little bit. So um, we can only control what we can control and we can control that. So that's, that's been helpful to us. Anybody else have anything, a uh, website or anything that you like to go to, to get new skills or information? Okay, well, we'll move on to the next little item then. So one of the other things that I've learned is that it doesn't matter if we can't see each other in person, we can definitely still connect. And one of my favorite people to connect to out there is Miss, uh, Tony Blake, and um, she has a new uh, Facebook group that you can join. It is called Totally Tony dot tell dash all dash Facebook. So if you want to go on Facebook and look that up, she has so many great ideas of what you can be doing. Um, during this time at your properties, what you can be doing for yourself. I mean, it is just so much information. Plus, um, I keep in touch with her every Tuesday at 10. She has a Totally Tony um, Facebook Live and covers a bunch of different uh, topics. And she used to do it before this ever started. And then she took a little break because she was traveling so much. And then now she's come back with doing her uh, Totally Tony at 10 on Tuesday. So join her there. Also look up her new Facebook. There's so much information on that group for Totally Tony Tell All um, Facebook. And then also the Zoom meetings. Uh, that one in the picture in the middle is uh, my one of my teams that I'm on. And uh, yesterday we had a call and uh, that was all of us on our call. But you can see Hank down there in the second the, almost the bottom, and he's got his little blinder glasses on, being kind of silly, but um, it's a great way to connect, and I feel like uh, there's more connectivity, actually, through some of my work groups right now, because we have started doing these Zoom meetings instead of a phone call where there's no one at the other end, right? We can see each other's faces, we can laugh together, we can cut up, and then there's nothing like having a wonderful happy hour um, with your friends, which you can do through Zoom, you can do through uh, Facebook uh, Live, you can do it. Uh, in fact, one of my friends, Amy Adams, has been holding a Facebook Live happy hour, I think every night for the past four nights. Um, but you can also FaceTime. And last night, Hank came down because he heard me laughing hysterically in the kitchen and my um, girlfriend who lives in Montgomery, Shelly and I were FaceTiming one another and having a costume party where she was dropping different costumes on us. And I know that sounds silly and childish, but it was just funny. And we looked absolutely ridiculous and we had a good laugh and it made us feel so much better because, you know, uh, she's going through a hard time right now. And a lot of my friends are. And so just to be able to get on the phone and laugh and connect with somebody is absolutely wonderful. So um, figure out different ways that you can connect with those that you love and your other team members who may not be at the office with you today. My really big thing, and I know I spoke to this earlier about um, gratitude and waking up every morning and 
being able to uh, write down five things that I am grateful for today uh, has been so important to me over, well, actually this started back in October. I was doing a Rachel Hollis next 30 days and I started writing those down at that time. And I, I didn't really understand why I was doing it, but I knew I needed to do it. And then I actually watched a webinar the other day that um, was talking about uh, gratitude and how important it, it is in helping to rid yourself of fears. So let me read this real quick. It says, gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos to order, confusion to clarity. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, a stranger into a friend. I think that's really a, a great way of putting it, but it's also so much more than that. Um, gratitude is actually a, it, it produces a higher level of frequency in your life. And what I mean by that is it, it operates on a totally different level and it helps to reach down and, and well, actually it suppresses your subconscious. And to tell you a little bit about your subconscious, your subcon for any of y'all who haven't taken psychology classes, which I think probably everybody on here has, um, but your subconscious is the part of your, your, your brain that tells you that you can't do something. It has all of the negative feels in it. It's where all of the things that have ever happened in your life are stored in that subconscious and will continue to tell you, you can't instead of you can. However, when you start practicing gratitude, it actually moves you up to a higher level of frequency that brings you into the conscious instead of the subconscious. So, you start seeing um, ways that things are possible in your life and that you can do something. And it's really funny because things start happening for you when you start practicing gratitude. Gratitude for the people who are around you, gratitude for the food on your table, gratitude for the job you have, gratitude for the things that annoy you, even sometimes about your mate. Those probably were the things that brought you to them in the first place. So. Um, practice gratitude. I think that it, and it also crushes fear. I don't want to uh, leave that out. Uh, so you kind of forget about the bad and you start uh, focusing on the good. This is another biggie too. <laughs> um, I want to let everybody know it's, it's okay to break down. We're all going to have those days where we're tired of being around the people who we're, we're stuck with in the places that we are. We're going to be tired of being alone. Um, I have several friends of mine who are single and they, they have no one at home with them. Uh, they don't go into an office. They've been told not to go to their offices. So they're all alone and there's that time that they, they break down and I've been having to tell them it's okay. It's okay to break down because, you know, uh, when you do cry or when you do have that outburst of I'm angry, um, it does naturally release a lot of endorphins that you need to. And I know that um, one of the people on this call this weekend actually um, shared a great article um, with me and their other friends on Facebook. And um, I, I just wanted to give them a minute because I asked them to um, share with us today a little bit about, um, you know, when you come to that breaking point. So Katie, if you could, you could, uh, unmute yourself and if you wouldn't mind sharing just a, a minute with me and the okay. group. So thanks, Michelle. Um, for those of you who might not know me, my name is Katie Mackey and I work behind the scenes at Chadwell Supply as the content coordinator. Um, I'm not really sure what this says about me that I get to be the person to talk to you about being vulnerable but as Michelle mentioned it's really because of an article that I read this weekend off of NPR entitled 
coronavirus upended our world, it is okay to grieve. But the result was an, an, a, what I call an accountability post to my friends on Facebook. And the gist of it was the realization that I'm not okay right now, and that's okay. So there have been so many changes to life in the past couple of weeks, um, and we're all learning a new normal. Um, and it's okay to grieve our lives as we knew them. So everyone's impacted, whether it's the change in our daily lives and our schedules, working from home, having children at home. It could be loss of employment, or it could be that someone you know is already sick with the virus. Um, we're all feeling stressed and it's okay. And it's okay to admit that we are not okay. Um, my post wasn't to create a pity or um, say that I've got it bad because really I'm quite blessed and I realized that. Um, but it was a way for me to kind of process what's, what's going on. Um, the surprising part was that my friends, um, they commented, they thanked me for my honesty um, and shared that many of them were feeling the same way. They shared their stories um, and in the end, maybe people process their feelings because of my vulnerability. But as there's been some positive things too, um, Michelle's mentioned a couple of them, but I found a group outside um, to do some workouts a couple mornings a week um, with plenty of physical distance between us. Um, I attended a virtual happy hour last night with some girlfriends who I haven't seen in a while. Um, plan to do a physically distant lunch with coworkers here in the new near future. And then she asked me to share today at lunch. So um, that being, being vulnerable has um, maybe helped some other people too. So before I toss it back to Michelle, I want to just kind of say, you know, I want you to think about, are you okay? Or are you not okay? And that's okay. But when you do figure out that answer, don't stop there. Um, figure out how you can take and help that to help somebody else. So that's my story. Thank you, Katie. That was beautiful. I appreciate that. I know everybody else on the call did too. Everybody raise your hands if you, if you can relate. <laughs> I can definitely, but, uh, and I am, I, I hate to say this, but I am one of those people that I am an emotional person and I can cry on the drop of a hat uh, with something like this. So <laughs> it, it, um, I appreciate you sharing. Uh, does anybody else have anything that they want to add or uh, to that before I go on? Oh, hey. Hey, I did want to add a little bit um, of something. So like you mentioned, it is okay to not feel okay. Um, I did take a few psychology classes in college and through those I learned that if you suppress all of your feelings and make yourself go numb, you can't end up feeling happy if you don't let yourself be upset. So it, it is important to feel those feelings and cry it out, even if they aren't great feelings, because if you suppress those, you'll, you'll never be able to be happy again. So you just become numb and that's whenever people fall into the depressions and everything. And we need to make sure that we're keeping ourselves healthy, whether we're working out, um, hanging out with our friends. I know I was mentioning to my regional manager yesterday, we held a manager's meeting with all our managers and assistant managers. And I just went out of my way to thank her because having Zoom meetings, it, whenever you're stuck in a house all day and not seeing anyone, you kind of get stuck behind the emails and it's nice to see faces and be able to chat and everything. So just like this, being able to kind of share what we're all going through, it's a great way to um, get, get a little unstuck from just being at home. That is so true. Thank you for sharing daily. Oh. So the other thing I've learned is we have some really extremely creative people in our industry and they are coming up with all kinds of wonderful events to do for their residents. Um, trails at Reedy Point Apartments um, is, let's see, this is Trailside at Reedy Point. Yeah, so the one on the far left hand side, they actually did like a little um, 
resident where they had music playing and brought everybody out onto their balconies and to kind of have a little um, time together out there with music and all. So I thought that that was really a neat little thing. Also, that's an Arlington property and another Arlington property, which I don't have them up here, but they actually are doing where they make the Starbucks coffee for the people and they will put them outside the door with their name on it, which I thought was so cute. Um, so it's kind of like, well, if uh, you can't come in, we'll deliver it out to you. And then Real Floors did this uh, e-spirit week with on their um, uh, Facebook where they're doing something different. And they had the funniest uh, TikTok talent show yesterday that they uh, shared. And it was really funny uh, to watch some of the people on their TikTok videos. And um, that kind of kicked off their TikTok for their company too, I believe. But they have all kinds of different, so I can't wait until Friday to see them all in their formal attire on there. If you don't follow Real Page on Facebook, uh, not Real Page, it's uh, Ready, Real Floors, Real Floors. You want to go on there and follow them. They're, they're hysterical. They also have some wonderful little, um, Facebook videos that they post on how to do all kinds of different things uh, and it's, as far as managing people goes. And then the talk, sidewalk talk, I have actually seen this in a lot of um, neighborhoods being done too, but I thought this was really cool that Huntley Woods uh, was doing with their residents so that they could leave a little message uh, of uh, inspiration to other people at the apartment community. My favorite, I think, is this Facebook post. And I can't, I'm sorry, I just like took a picture of it on my phone and I don't have an idea of what uh, property this was, but I do know it was a Gray Star property and they had their whole entire staff in the courtyard and they had the music blaring. They invited everybody out for a dance party. And I think I've seen people doing workouts on their, their balconies. Um, live DJs, uh, there have been some great things. And along, I said about Tony, uh, totally Tony, um, tell all, she also is constantly reposting uh, different events that people are having. She has all kinds of um, flyers that are, or posts that you can do on Facebook about um, the flushing, the, the wipes and all of that, and they're really funny and um, very entertaining. Um, the other little thing, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is a little note means so much. Uh, yesterday, and uh, there may have been several of you on this call that I, I had sent uh, this to, but also I received uh, this on the far left-hand side for you, my friend, uh, from a former CEO of a company that I worked for. And um, boy, Talk about, I went from, uh, you know, a smile to a, a, a cry because it meant so much, so much to me that I know he may have been passing it along to 50,000 other people, but it meant so much to uh, have that little word of encouragement. And Tony also had posted on her Tony, um, totally Tony tell all, about doing windows of hope and um, sharing a message of hope in the windows of the apartments. And I thought that's such a cool idea um, to be able to just share that little bit of inspiration. But hey, it's back to letter writing time, guys, um, or, or texting your friends and just giving them like a little word of encouragement and let them know how much uh, they mean to you. I would, I would read this to you, but I'm not going to because I might cry. So <laughs> I told you I could cry at a drop of the hat. So the, um, one of my other things I ran across, I, I don't know if y'all follow Edge to Learn, but Edge to Learn is a um, learning platform for your properties. And they uh, put out uh, different articles on Facebook um, pretty frequently, and if you don't follow him on Facebook, definitely follow him. This is Joanna Ellis, who uh, also has Ellis uh, Shopping Service, 
And um, one of the gals who works for her had written an article about how to deal um, with the times that we're faced with now. And I loved this. This is from Dr. Debbie Phillips. And it was something that she had heard um, or actually read, I guess, in something that Debbie had posted on LinkedIn. But I'm gonna have to put on my glasses because I am gonna read this to you. Um, Dr. Debbie, uh, these are her own words, okay? I'm thankful that some things remain constant. Flowers still bloom and friendships endure. I was reflecting on something my coach shared with me a few years ago. Debbie, be bamboo. You must learn to be flexible. Bamboo bends with the wind, but never breaks. It is capable of adapting to any circumstance. It suggests resilience, meaning that we have the ability to bounce back even from the most difficult times. I read this from my journal in July of 2009, and my gosh, that advice still stands the test of time. I've set a goal to send out 10 cards a day to encourage my friends. Flexibility is the key this Friday and every day that ends in blah. I love Dr. Debbie Phillips, and I know a lot of you on this call who know who she is do too. And um, she taught me during times like this, and always we should be flexible like bamboo. So that's the, the end of the part of what I've learned. Um, I did want to share with you also that I did learn this too. Um, we are now offering EPA 608 online studies. Uh, so if you have anybody who is needing to get their EPA 608, uh, we are offering it. You can go to chadwellsupply.com forward slash online EPA and sign up for this course. It will be, uh, I believe it's a three-day course. No, it's four days, four-day course. So if anybody's needing to do that, then um, make sure to get them signed up. And then um, before I just end this call today, I did want to um, share with you, last week I told you that we would have a winner for a virtual lunch with us. And I don't know if they're on the call today because I haven't run through all of uh, my people and I don't have the, uh, let's see, I don't, I don't know if they're on here. But um, our winner from last week's uh, virtual lunch is North Grove Apartments, Tanisha uh, Pinkney, I believe is it, uh, with Elmington. They have won a virtual lunch. I know that uh, the rep has reached out to contact them and um, be able to arrange for lunch to be brought into them. So if you want us to bring lunch into your property, or uh, deliver lunch to one of the properties if you are a regional. Um, you can simply go to uh, the chat box down at the bottom of your screen and enter in your email address and your name and the company that you're with. And we will be drawing for another one to give away next week. And we'd like for you to be able to have lunch with us on the call and be here. So make sure to go to that chat box and register for that. But today I wanna leave you with um, just one last thing. And uh, before I open it up to the group to see if anybody else wants to add anything that they've learned during this time. But it's, I think that when the dust settles, we will realize how little we need how very much we actually have in the true value of human connection. And I know this rings true for, for me. Um, I don't know about for all of you, but uh, I know that I'm realizing a little more each day, um, all of these things and how much I'm missing my two daughters and being able to hug them, um, my granddaughter. <laughs> So miss him, get to see him on FaceTime every once in a while, but I do miss them. And I miss getting to hug all of your necks at all of these conventions that we're missing right now. So um, I know that it's, it's teaching me 
um, something new every day. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And I hope to see you next week at our lunch. And let me take one more before I hang up one more and a little swoop through here to see everybody's faces. And thanks, um, Michelle. Thanks for joining us and see y'all next week. Ollie wanted to say hey. <gasps> oh, look who it is. Paul, that's come my granddaughter. That's here. my granddaughter. <laughs> He's helping me lease lease apartments today. <laughs> Uh, and Aaron said to come get him. <laughs> okay. I'll send your father. <laughs> all right. Thanks, all right. Mom. Love you. Love, Love you all of y'all. Take care. Have a great day. Go get them. <laughs>